very glad that you come to worship this morning as my mic comes on. Let's stand together as we sing more precious than silver this morning as we open up our worship just uh, valuing our Savior this morning, telling him how good he's been to us, but also telling him how great he is as a God. This is more precious. Good morning, church family. 
It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Excellent. We are excited to be here with you here at First Baptist. If this is your first time here, I want to be one of the first, hopefully not the first, to tell you welcome. We're glad that you're here. Welcome home. If you are visiting, if you're a guest for the first time, we encourage you to fill out a small yellow card. It'll be in the pew in front of you. It's just basic information. We're not going to hand it out to anybody. It's just for our records and for us to get to know you a little bit better and for us to be able to pray for you and get you plugged in here at First Baptist. We are excited to be here to praise the Lord this morning. Let's go ahead and go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we stand here as your people, and we are in awe of you. We are in awe of who you are for what you've done for us, and not just in our own lives personally, but in the lives of others and in the lives of our church. And God, we, we praise you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory that you deserve. Lord, I pray that you be with us as we go through our service today, that you continue to move our hearts to allow us to be closer to you and get to know you more through word, prayer, and scripture. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for who you are, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship.
as we sing at the cross this morning. As we come to this time to give our tithes and offerings, it reminds me of how full the Bible is of Scripture about this very thing. And I uh, picked one today that out of Proverbs from the wisdom of, of Solomon. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats 
will brim with new wine. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, our Creator, the only one worthy of our honor and praise and thanksgiving, we come now to give our tithes and offerings, and we ask that you multiply these and bless them for your service to bring your kingdom here to earth. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Johnny. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go now. <clears throat> well, you may have noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, pray for my voice today, or your ears, one or the other. You may have noticed in the bulletin that today is celebrating our seniors, and you may have thought, well, I didn't realize we were celebrating our graduates yet. That will come in two weeks. That'll come in two weeks. Uh, today we're starting a new series, One Big Family, and, and one of the things that I, I love about our church family is that it truly is a picture of, of a family. We have multiple generations within our family, our church family, and some of those are actually biological uh, generational 
representation. We have some grandparents and parents and children within our, our church that are all part of the same biological family, which is a good picture, a wonderful picture of who we are as a church. And we need to celebrate that fact. We need to celebrate that we have children. You, you may have heard me, and of course now that we've gone back to two services, we have fewer in here sometimes, but, but you've, you've probably heard me say this in the past when a, a child is, is maybe being a child in the service, and, and some are looking around going, somebody needs to do something about that. What we need to remember is that's a healthy sound. That is a godly sound. Because the church is a family. It's, it's for all generations. And some church, we have some wonderfully strong, wonderful churches in our town. But some of them focus specifically or more intentionally on, on the younger crowd. And, and there's value in that. And we need to do our part as a church to reach the younger generation. Because honestly, as you've heard me say before, we're one generation away from extinction every year. I mean, every generation. If we don't pass this on... It dies. And so there's value in that. But one of the things that I think we are unique in, and, and First Baptist Church Corpus Christi, is we have multiple generations that can pour into one another, can lean on one another, learn from one another. And that's so important. And so we shouldn't, we shouldn't disparage that or, or, or be concerned. We should celebrate the fact that we have children and seniors who can relate together as a family. And so this series is really going to be focused on, over the next several weeks, thinking about what it looks like, what it means to be a family, the family of God. We'll talk about parenting and, and raising children here in a couple of weeks. We'll talk about marriage. Not that I'm an expert, but we'll see what the Bible says. We'll talk about what it means to come together and, and serve together, to, to use our gifts as a family so that as a family, as a body, we're moving forward and serving God as we should. But today I want us to focus in, in a couple of different ways on the importance and the value of those more experienced in our congregation. We are, as I said, a multi-generational church having grandparents and parents and children. And, and some of that is, is biological, but some of it is, is that we get to serve. I'm now a grandparent. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. You don't look old enough to be a grandparent. But, but it's opened my eyes to the fact that, that even somebody like me can pour into the life of a three-year-old in our church. I've also realized that the older I get, the more experience I have, and maybe, hopefully, a little wisdom that goes along with that. So, as a church, we need to see ourselves as that, as, as this family that is here to be here for one another. And so, as the more seniors in the group, I, I want to address uh, this group today with this idea of, of layers of generation Growing closer to Jesus and growing closer to one another. That, that's what it means to be a church. Our church is focused on growing in our faith. And we get to experience and enjoy those layers of generations coming together to do just that. To grow in our faith together. So that's what this series is really going to look at. And today I want us again, as I said, to focus with our seniors. Those who have the experience that comes with years. Those who have been around long enough to have seen some things. Anybody in the room been around long enough to have seen some things? Any changes over the last 30, 40, 50 years? Let me just say you have so much to offer. You have so much to offer. And you've heard me say this before, but if you're not dead, you're not done. And so celebrate that. And look for those things. Look for those ways that you can be active, be involved in sharing. So what I want us to look at today is this psalm, Psalm 71. You can go ahead and turn there. But, but as we do this, I want us to be thinking about we are to always be learning, growing, and always be sharing. And you'll hear that throughout this psalm. Before we read this psalm together... <clears throat> 
I want to, again, lay the, I've done this before, but I want to lay the definition of what I believe biblical wisdom is. Wisdom is not just knowledge. Wisdom is knowledge tempered by experience. So somebody can read a book and have a lot of knowledge, but still know nothing about life. Amen? It, it takes both. Lived experience. Now, that doesn't just produce knowledge. You've got to do something with it. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But wisdom is knowledge tempered by experience. So I want to do something a little different today um, as we read this text. And let me just, again, lay the groundwork. David has written this most likely in his more uh, senior years as he's reflecting back, reminiscing, thinking. And so I want to to do something here, and I, I know I take... Uh, take a chance by this, but I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and, and just listen. The chance is you'll fall asleep, so try not to do that. But close your eyes and let me read this passage over you. Psalm 71, beginning in verse 14. But as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more My mouth will tell of your righteousness, of your salvation all day long, though I know not its measure. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, O sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteousness, yours alone. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Your righteousness reaches to the skies, O God. You have done great things. Who, O God, is like you? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and my comfort. You will comfort me once again. Now, if you're still awake, you can look this way. What stood out to you in that passage? What I hear when when I read that passage is that that emphatic, that, that I will keep going, I will keep learning, I will keep sharing, proclaiming. He says, don't forsake me, Lord, until I have proclaimed your righteousness, your great deeds to the next generation. That is what we are to be about. We are to always be learning, always be growing, never stop growing. Proverbs 16.31 says, the gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. I'm getting more and more of that. This, this, what I want to start with is this idea that in, in verse 16, he says, I will come and proclaim it's active. One of the, the theologians I, I, I read in, in preparation talked about the fact that this is not David sitting idle. This is him saying, I am actively going to do this. I'm going to come. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to proclaim all that you have done. That is what we are to be about, to, to stay active, to not become idle, but rather Always be growing, always be learning, and always be sharing. Now, as I said, wisdom comes with experience. It's knowledge tempered by experience. But just growing old does not make a person wise. Let me say that again and let you just sit on that a second. Growing old, just growing old does not make a person wise. We grow older and we experience life, yes. And as we go through life, we will have good days and bad days. Have you had, have you had that experience? We will have victories and we will have defeats. Sounds like the old ABC wild word of sports. The agony, I'm showing my age here, aren't I? Some of you in the room are looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll always see that guy going off that ski jump. Always. Sorry, back online. We'll have those victories. We'll we'll have those defeats. We, We have good days and bad days. We make good choices and bad choices. But we gain wisdom in the way that we process life's experiences. When we learn, 
from those experiences. And that wisdom, what we learn, needs to be passed on. Now, heaven forbid we sit back in our recliners in our older age and go, let them learn the hard way. No, we need to be helping the next generation and say, learn from my wins, but learn from my mistakes also. We have a responsibility to pour into the next generation, to proclaim God's goodness and what God has done in our lives so that the younger generations can see this is real. We learn from our experiences. Our experiences are God's classroom. Think about that for a minute. Our experiences, good and bad, are God's classroom. That's where He teaches us. That's where we learn. Verse 20 says, Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. Dennison, James Dennison says, God redeems everything He allows. There's an ancient proverb that I, I just love. It, I'll, I'll say it twice so that it sinks in. All sunshine makes a desert. All sunshine makes a desert. Trust me, I grew up in one. I know. Without the rain, without the clouds, without the storms, there's no growth. It's just sand. Like I've said before, I grew up on the beach. There just wasn't any water at the end of it. If you don't know where I grew up, I grew up west of Midland, Odessa. So, 20 miles before you fall off the edge of the earth, that's where I grew up. It takes going through those difficult times. And so the psalmist says here in verse 20, even though you have had me see troubles, bitter, many, you will redeem those. You will restore my life. Life should be a learning endeavor. He says in verse 17, since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. So it's not that we reach a point. I believe the, the most important words in this verse are to this day. God's desire for us is to be fulfilled and useful, and that doesn't stop at a certain age. We don't hit 52 or 71 and say, I've done what God's called me to do. When we say that, and we mean it, and we really believe it, then it's time for us to go. There's not a certain age that we reach and say, okay, we're done. David says here, to this day, right now, where I am today, God is still growing me. God is still working in my life. God is still teaching me. It stops, I believe, when we're standing in His presence in heaven, and even then, I'm not sure that it will. We must never stop growing. We must never stop learning. I don't believe that David is here acting the role of, of a, an older person saying, I remember way back when. He's saying, I remember what God has done and He's still doing it to this day. He's still active in my life. He's still faithful in my life. There are great and mighty and wonderful deeds that He is doing in my life and I need to share that. The question that I have about for myself, and, and I'll ask you, in verse 14 he says, As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. Can, can we say that? Can I say that and mean it? Is that my heart's desire? To always have hope and, and to praise Him more and more. I believe as we get older and as, as we grow in our understanding and as we have those experiences and we learn from those, that we realize that there's more and more of God that we don't know, that we want to know, that we need to know. That was one of the most revelatory things that I learned when I entered college. Coming out of high school, I figured that I had the world figured out. Right? Right? Anybody remember those days? For some of us, that's a long time ago like me, but I remember. In fact, side notes, not in my notes, but I'm just going to tell you this story really quickly. When I entered Hardin-Simmons in the, the theology program, they required something back then, and they may still do it, I don't, I don't know, but they had you take a personality inventory. 
And then when you graduated, they had you take it again. And then you had to sit down with someone and, and talk through how, how you changed. Does that make sense? So I will tell you, in this particular story, I don't even remember what it was. I just know I'd answered a lot of questions, and I had to go sit down with a, uh, one of the, the professors who probably needed counseling after he met with me. But, but in this particular survey, it equated you, your personality, your, your mentality, how you approach difficulties and, and those kind of things, it, it equated you with, with different known leaders in the past. And so when I went down and I, and I sat down with, with Dr. Omer Hancock, he, I sat across the desk from him, and, and he was very gentle, very gracious. If, if, you, if anybody knew him, knows him, he, he's just that, got that demeanor. And I could tell he was struggling. He, he went through and he said, this is this, this is this. And I said, okay, okay, whatever. And again, I'm a sophomore at this point and, uh, you know, have it all figured out. And he said, he, he, I can tell he's struggling. He says, well, I just need to tell you on, on the dogmatism scale, uh, which means, you know, knowing what you believe and holding on to it. He said, on the dogmatism scale, the, the leader in history that you relate most closely to is Adolf Hitler. I'll tell you how bad it was. I thought that was a good thing. Not because I thought Adolf Hitler was a good man, but because he stood for what he believed. It's interesting how just in the next two and a half years, my personality changed. Because what was most revelatory initially in my college experience was when I got to college and started studying, particularly as a Bible major, studying Scripture, I realized how much I didn't know. If we're all honest with ourselves, I think we can say, as much as I know, there's more that I don't. I need to be learning. I need to be growing. Never stop growing. Never stop learning. He says, from my youth to this very day, I'm learning. I'm growing. God is showing me His goodness, His faithfulness. Don't sit idle, but strive to keep going. Keep going. And never stop sharing. I want to share something with you. I found this very insightful, very revelatory. And now that I am the age I am, very encouraging. I went through a couple of years ago. It started actually in 2020. The North American Mission Board developed a leadership training program. And they did it all. Of course, if you remember what happened in 2020, it's all a blur, I know, but, but everything was by Zoom. So every week we were meeting with a cohort of people going through this curriculum by Zoom. But I remember in this study, they had looked at two different uh, specialists in sociology but they both arrived at the same thing. And one of the things that they taught us in this, in this leadership development uh, class, and it was really looking at, at my leadership, at the leadership as a pastor, and, and as an individual. But within that course, we focused on, on effectiveness. And they looked at these two different sociologists who had done a study on, on what decade of a person's life are they most effective and most impactful. Anybody want to guess what the number one decade in a person's life overall, where they are most effective and most impactful? Anybody want to guess? Say that again. 40s, 50s. The greatest, the, the number one decade, according to these two separate studies, is the decade between 60 and 70 is your most impactful decade. You know what number two is? 70 to 80. Wow. Now, I'm not making this up. The third is 50 to 60. So for me, being 58, I'm like, well, I'm third, but I still got one and two to go. But I say that to say, you have so much to give. I'm looking around the room and several of you are in that Number one category. Some of you are in that number two category. Never stop sharing. God has been faithful. 
from the earliest recollection. God has been and continues to be hope. This should give us the courage to hope and trust in God as, as we have passed from youth to adulthood. It also gives us a reason to offer bold affirmation that God is really God. You have so much to offer because you've seen so much. You've experienced so much. And hopefully, prayerfully, you've learned through those experiences. So you have wisdom to share and impart. David says, I will declare your power to the next generations, your mighty acts to all those that come. That's what we are to be doing. What difference has Jesus made in your life? Has He, has he provided you salvation? Not rhetorical. Has He provided you salvation? Has He provided you redemption? Has He provided you peace and joy? And hope? God is faithful. And David says in verse 18, I will declare that. I will declare your power to the next generations, your mighty acts to all who are to come. He provides us with love and joy and hope and peace. He's answered prayer. Verse 19 says, you have done great things. Is that your experience? Has God done great things in your life? We're to share those. Don't keep those to yourself. We have a job to do. We are to proclaim God's goodness to the next generation. And it doesn't stop just because we get older. In fact, it becomes even more crucial Verse 18 says, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, until I have shared with the next generation. The psalmist is asking God not to pull back, but to keep on using him. Use me to the end. Continue to be to me as you always have been. As long as we are alive, we should strive to glorify God and bless others. In verse 15, he says, and I found this somewhat interesting given our, our culture and our world today. He says, my mouth will tell of your righteousness, of your salvation all day long, though I know not its measure. One translation says, though I know not how. You ever feel that way? I've got lots to share, but I don't know how to communicate with this new generation. Okay, that's, that's rhetorical. Don't respond, but I know you're thinking it. <clears throat> But David says that's not an excuse. We are to continue to proclaim what God has done in our lives. To share that with the next generation so that they understand the importance. And so that they can learn and grow as well. As long as you have breath, use it to proclaim the goodness of God. Now, what is all this teaching us? First, I, I believe that it's, it's teaching us that those with some gray hair, with some years behind, still have a lot to offer. But secondly, I also believe it's teaching the younger in the family that we need to learn. Be willing to honor and respect those who do have that wisdom and that experience. To learn from them, to respect them, to honor them. There's great wisdom in this room and as I said earlier, one of the, the most unique characteristics, I believe, of our family is, is this true picture of what a family looks like, a multi-generational gathering of, of people under one, play, under one roof for one cause, to grow in our understanding of who Jesus is and to learn to walk with Him more closely and doing that together. Each generation adds value. We need you. And the younger generation needs to understand that. Without the old and the young, we will not be whole. That's who we are. And we need to celebrate that. Without the young and the old, we will not be whole. We will not be the family that God has called us to be. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, all of you, old and young, Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. 
We are to learn from one another. We are to humble ourselves to one another and learn from one another. Realize, older generation, realize the younger generation can teach us something. Sometimes maybe how to use a cell phone. But they can teach you. An older generation realize you have things to teach. Younger generation realize you can learn. We need each other. It, it, it is never too late to learn. And it's never too late to share what God is doing in our lives, what He has done. Peter tells us to submit to one another. We owe honor and respect to one another. Older and younger. One of my joys in ministry, and I'll close with this, and I see it right here in this family, in this church. It just, you know, I wouldn't say I could compare it to, to like a really proud father, you know, that, that, that aspect. I, I don't see myself as a father to the, to the church for many reasons, but <clears throat> one of which is that's not our tradition. But, but I, I don't know that I would equate it like that. But there is a sense of fulfillment and joy in my heart when I see younger leaders stepping into that role in our church and older leaders surrounding them and helping them. I see it in our deacon body. I see it in uh, some of our committees, some of our teams. That brings great joy because it tells me that that's what this family is really all about. We've got to raise up younger leaders, and sometimes that means we've got to let go as older folks, but not let go to the standpoint of, say, I wash my hands of it, they're done, it's on them, but rather let go and become a support role, an encouraging role. And it brings joy to my heart when I see that, and I do see it in our own church family. That is what it means to truly be a family. To grow together, to learn together. So we need to celebrate and value the wisdom that comes with age. And we need to respect that. Celebrate it. And don't shrink back from it. But know that you have something to offer. My, my challenge for us as we close is to never stop growing, learning, and sharing regardless of your age. This really fits for no matter how old you are in the room today. Never stop. Never stop growing. Never stop learning. Never stop sharing. Regardless of the years that you've circled the sun. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have called us as First Baptist Church Corpus Christi to be a multi-generational family. To be a family, a picture. I believe in some ways, albeit faulted and leaving things short, in some ways we are a picture of heaven. This is what heaven will look like. Different people different backgrounds, different experiences all coming together. And so, Lord, that, that is a picture of our church. Different ages, different experiences, different, different in so many different ways. But yet coming together as one family. So today we, we stop and we think about how important it is to honor those who maybe have a few more years under their belt than we do. But Lord, also to celebrate and encourage those who are older, more wise, and remind them that they still have so much to give. In fact, they have more to give now than they ever have. So Lord, be, be glorified in our church as we grow together, as we learn together, as we love together, as we serve together. May we be truly the church that you have called us to be for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a moment, I'll ask you to stand for a time of response. Uh, I'll be here. Michael will be here. Stephen will be here. If there's a decision you'd like to make, we'll be here. If you'd like to come for prayer, we'll be here. But today, be reminded, regardless of your age, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you have a relationship with him, you have so much offer. So never stop learning and never stop sharing. As we stand and sing together, focus on that. Take my life and let it be consecrated.
Y'all can have a seat. Just a few announcements before we head out to Bible study, because I know everyone's going to Bible study this morning. So the first announcement we have, I actually don't know what it is. Y'all get the slide for me, please. (laughs) Excellent. Thank you. I wanted to print out my notes this morning, but you know, printers never work whenever you need them to, so it didn't happen. Um, So we have the Mary Lois Harris Schultz Scholarship that is now available for the upcoming school year. Applications are available in the church office, or you can do it via email. And the deadline is at the end of the month. Deadline is March 31st. May. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Reading works better when you actually do it. Thank you. Um, The next one is the 42 party. So Barbara gave me some extra notes on this one as well. This is for any skill level of playing the game of 42. So any skill level where you've been playing two years, two days, 20 years, doesn't matter. We want everyone to be there. She said that they're not going to gamble at first. Okay, so you're... (laughs) You're going to learn the game first, and then they're going to take your money and wipe the floor with you. Um, But everyone's welcome, regardless of age, once again, everyone's welcome to partake in that. We also have VBS coming up. It kind of snuck up on us. It is almost June, July. So July 24th through 28th is going to be the dates for VBS. We are looking for volunteers. I know Brian was just talking about a way to invest in our church. A lot of you all of us have much that we can give. And so we'd love to have you invest in our younger generation um, with VBS. You can sign up for that outside in the hallway. And we have Music Palooza coming up as well, another one that snuck up on us at the end of May, not March. But we're going to have handbells, choir, praise, and there's also going to be a meal afterwards in Elmore Hall. So we look forward to that. And one more thing that I'll announce is last week was our youth-led Sunday Um, It was a blessing to many of us to be able to see our youth lead us in worship and lead us in many different aspects of the service. And so they are still looking for some fundraising help. So if you feel led to do that, I ask you to just prayerfully consider grabbing one of the envelopes. For instance, if it's a $12 envelope, you can put $12 in there. You can put more, but please don't put less. Um, But you can help them fundraise and help send some of our youth to camp. Pastor Brian. Thank you, Corey. Just to uh, go on record and be clear, First Baptist Church does not encourage nor condone gambling on our property. <clears throat> so, just want to make, make sure we all understand that. Are you glad you came today? Amen. Me too. I, I, I do this occasionally, and not probably nearly enough, but I am so grateful and humbled to serve alongside of you. We've been through a lot together. We've got a lot to go. But as I look around and see faces, I am so grateful that you still put up with me and that we're walking this journey together. I love each of you. So as we're dismissed today, never forget that you are loved by God 
You are a child of God. And you have so much to offer. May the God who created us out of love. Created us with specific gifts and talents and experiences. Remind us. We are to always be learning. and Always be sharing. Amen. We're dismissed. Thank you.